Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This will be the start of a new story called The Fox and the Hare. All credit to the author, their information can be found in the description below, as well as a link to the story if you would like to read along. This will be chapter 1 to 4. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and comment to help with the algorithm. It's much appreciated. Now let's get into the story. Oh, Kiba. Pass it to me, yelled a blonde haired boy. Listening to his call, Kiba kicked the ball to him. It looked like it was going to go out of bounds. It had been kicked way too high up in the air. However, the blonde haired boy crouched and suddenly launched himself into the air. It was as if there was a jetpack attached to his back. He got two times more airtime than the world record of the best NBA player from a few generations ago, and to top it all off, he also made an impressive flip in the air before Axe kicking the soccer ball with the heel of his foot, accurately blasting it towards the corner of the opposing team's goalpost like a rocket. It was the exaggerated swagger of a mutant-type quirk user. The goalkeeper had not even seen the ball coming. Before he knew what happened, not only did the ball fly past his head like a bullet, it even made a hole in the net of the goalpost and exploded with a loud boom when it smashed against the outer wall of the school in the back of the soccer field. The blonde boy landed on the ground gracefully and made a victory pose, quite proud of the awesome goal that he had just scored. But the other children on the pitch did not look surprised in the least. Instead, they were annoyed. You bastard, always showing off and stealing my thunder, Kiba yelled. But in spite of his words, there was a toothy grin on his face as he came and high-fived him. Booing sounds came from the opposing team. Sensei, it's not fair. Uzumaki used his quirk again. One of the boys in the opposing team complained. The PE teacher, a burly middle-aged man with a whistle hanging from his neck, frowned in thought as he looked at Naruto. He appeared like a rather normal middle school boy if you ignored the fluffy golden fox ears on his head, the whisker-like birthmarks on his face, and the bushy but silky-looking golden furred tail at his back. Uzumaki Naruto had a rather simple and seemingly banal quirk, a fox quirk. In the early days of the apparition of quirks, animal-type quirks were not seen as very formidable, looking rather tame compared to emitter-type quirks that could create explosions, release electricity, summon tornadoes, and so on. However, as of late, with the emergence of amazing heroes with animal-type quirks, people gain newfound respect for such simple mutant-type quirks. For example, among the top 10 strongest heroes in Japan, one had a rabbit quirk. While rabbits were harmless and skittish creatures normally, the rabbit hero, Mirko, could not be any more different than that. She was relentless and violent, a woman that never backed down from a fight. Her explosive power and speed were something to be feared. Nowadays, over 80% of Japan's population had a quirk. Quirkless people had become increasingly rare with the passing years. To prevent potential accidents and tragedies, students in public schools were forbidden from using their quirks. However, the lines were rather blurred when it came to heteromorphic type quirks. Generally, mutant types did not have to activate any sort of power to enhance themselves. They were physically superior by nature. Performing superhuman feats was the norm for them. The PE teacher was broken off from his musings when another blonde boy, why were all blondes problem children, kicked the ball, and a mighty explosion propelled it forward not any slower than Uzumaki Naruto's previous shot. The goalkeeper of the opposite team had been too scared to even attempt defending and instead jumped away from the goalpost, afraid for his life. A sharp whistle noise rang, and both Naruto and Kiba suddenly crouched and covered their ears with their hands. Sensei, stop, it hurts, they yelled at the same time, their sense of hearing being way more sensitive than that of regular humans. While Uzumaki Naruto had a fox quirk, Kiba, a brown-haired boy, had a mutant-type quirk as well, a dog quirk. Similar to Naruto, Kiba also had a pair of pointed dog ears on top of his head. In addition, his teeth and nails were sharper than average, and a dog's scraggly tail wagged listlessly at his back. With such similar quirks and matching personalities too, both of them were hyperactive, boisterous, and loud. The two boys had clicked from the very first moment they had met. Naruto and Kiba were best friends. Baku go, red card. You're out. Team Blue gets a free kick. The P teacher shouted, but all the members of the red team started complaining out loud. Not fair. Why can Uzumaki use his quirk and Katsuki not? You're biased, it's not fair, sensei. The P teacher felt like wanting to pull out his hair due to frustration. How could he explain to the students that mutant type quirks were different from emitter type quirks? It was indeed unfair, but such was life too. The only way to stop people with mutant-type quirks from using their strength and natural advantages, imagine a four-armed man for a goalkeeper, was to ban them from playing completely. 
but that would lead to the opening of another can of worms, discrimination, which was even worse. Allowing everyone to use their quirks was not an option either because it would completely sideline quirkless people too. No matter how one went about it, a particular group would be disadvantaged. Banning emitter-type quirk users from using their powers was the most fair option there was. In the end, the match did not get a proper finish as it devolved into a huge argument between students and the teacher, with the principal being forced to intervene in order to put a stop to it. Tisich, the soccer championship was cancelled this year too. To heck with that, they should just let everyone use their quirks. We'd still kick everyone's butts, the fox-like boy said as he walked on the sidewalk while juggling skillfully with a soccer ball. But of course, we're the strongest in the whole school. Why is the school catering to all these losers with useless quirks? Kiba said in annoyance. Boy, that was mean. Izuku here doesn't have a quirk at all, Naruto said. The boy in question stammered and waved his hands as if to say he doesn't mind it, but Naruto put his hands on his waist and said, Listen man, you gotta have more confidence. You can't let people walk all over you like that. Stand up for yourself. If you don't punt dog breath when he goes out of line, he'll never learn his lesson. What was that? I'll kick your butt. Kiba yelled, and a growl-like sound came from him. Easy for you to say that when you have such an amazing quirk, Izuku murmured. He was a short and rather scrawny boy with wavy green hair and a timid-looking freckled face. Izuku had spoken quietly enough that regular people would not be able to hear his words, but the two boys next to him just happened to have extremely sharp senses, among other things. Even if you can't do something by yourself, you should rely on your friends a bit, Naruto said with a grin and threw his arm around Izuku's shoulder. That's what friends are for. We help each other. I still haven't forgotten how you helped me pass my maths term exam. If it weren't for you, I would be stuck in cram school now. The green-haired boy smiled shyly at Naruto's encouragement. That's right. You might be quirkless, but you're our friend, Kiba said in agreement and punched him lightly in the shoulder. And if that exploding blonde bastard tries to find trouble with you again, just tell me. I will beat the crap out of him every time he tries to bully you. There's no need for that. Katsuki is leaving me alone these days, Izuku said and showed a big smile. While the three boys were in the same year, Naruto and Kiba were not in the same class as Izuku. Izuku and his bully, Bakugo, were in a different class. After Kiba and Naruto took Izuku under their wings, Bakugo had tried to find trouble with Izuku for betraying their class and siding with the enemy. Bakugo had an intense rivalry with the amazing duo of Fox and Dog Quirk users from the other class. In truth, Bakugo could not care less about his class. It was just a pretext he found to mess with Izuku. All that repressed anger and annoyance at not being able to defeat Inazuka Kiba had to be vented somewhere. And what better choice of a target than a quirkless boy who could not defend himself? However, things did not end well for the bully. Once Kiba found out about it, in a fit of anger, he jumped on Bakugo the next time he saw him and proceeded to beat him so badly that even his mother had trouble recognizing his face. That day, Inazuka Kiba had claimed the position as the top dog in Aldera Junior High. Kiba got suspended for two weeks for that stunt. Bakugo's mother had even tried to press charges, but she dropped the matter soon after because altercations between teenagers with quirks were far too common these days. Seeing as her son had not suffered any lasting trauma from the incident, it would be difficult for her case to find any success in court. Regular teens had always been a volatile mass of emotions, pride, and more energy than they knew what to do with it. Adding superpowers into the mix was a recipe for disaster. For example, only a few days ago, a teen boy had stolen someone's bag, and when he was found out and cornered, he went out of control. Transforming into a giant humanoid monster, he started to wreak havoc. The incident made it to the local newspapers. As the three boys walked home together, they kept talking and joking around happily. Eventually, they had to disband their merry little group, seeing as they lived in different areas of the district. As Naruto walked home, he continued to play with his soccer ball. Sometimes, he would run at the passersby coming from the opposite direction, startling them, only to do a rainbow soccer trick, kicking the ball with his heel, from the back, over his and his opponent's heads before rushing past them. Sometimes, people would get annoyed with him, but most of them would usually just smile helplessly at him. After years of witnessing his shenanigans, most of the people on that street had become familiar with the energetic fox-like boy. Right as he passed by a playground, the younger kids who saw him with the ball quickly rushed out and crowded around him. Naruto and I, I said, show us some cool tricks. They all yelled enthusiastically. As per usual, Naruto did not ignore their pleas. He loved showing off his soccer skills. All right, all right, just give me some space, yo, 
he said and entered the playground with his ball. With the kids moving a bit back and making a circle around him, Naruto grinned at them and put his foot on top of the ball. Suddenly, he rolled the ball toward him and lifted it in the air with the tip of his foot, right above his head. Before the ball could fall to the ground, he stepped in and bent down a bit, the ball landing right on the back of his neck. So far, so good. It was nothing amazing, just a neck stall. Any other soccer enthusiast could probably do that. It was what followed that made the kids all break into loud cheers. In an impressive display of dexterity and hand-eye coordination, Naruto used his knees, feet, and even his fluffy tail to juggle the ball spectacularly. All good things come to an end, however, and accompanied by a chorus of disappointed whines from the kids, Naruto left the playground and started heading home once again. Suddenly, an obnoxious baby laughter ringtone rang, and Naruto groaned. It was his cell phone. Flipping it open and answering the call, he was forced to distance the phone from his sensitive hearing as a woman's loud voice blasted into his eardrums. Naruto, what are you doing, you delinquent? School finished 40 minutes ago. Get home already. All right, all right, sheesh. I'm on my way. Why are you yelling? He yelled back. Don't you raise your voice at me, young man. Just wait till you get home. Naruto snorted and shut the flip of his phone closed, effectively ending the call. He did not really care about his mother's retaliation and threats in the least. All she or his father could do was yell at him. And that was a common issue for many parents nowadays. When children had quirks so powerful that they would not look out of place in a superhero comic book, their parents were often at a loss in how to deal with them when they acted rebelliously. What's her problem anyway? Not like I'm doing any illegal crap. I'm not even smoking like the cool kids. And I'm not doing drugs either like punks who skip classes. All she does is bitch about my grades and for coming home late every day. Picking up his ball in his hands, he started walking home, not even in the mood to play around anymore. What do I even need good grades for anyway? He grumbled and kicked a piece of rock on the sidewalk in frustration. He was not oblivious regarding how amazing his quirk was. While a fox quirk seemed nothing special compared to some emitter quirks out there, Naruto had yet to meet anyone who could beat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Even someone with an overpowered quirk like Bakugo Katsuki from his school couldn't beat him. After all, Naruto was a tiny bit stronger than Kiba, and the dog quirk user had mopped the floor with Bakugo. Furthermore, besides his enhanced dexterity and physical capabilities, Naruto's fox quirk granted him a powerful sense of smell, very sensitive hearing, and excellent eyesight and night vision too. His career paths were promising. Even if he didn't become a hero, which was doubtful, he could easily join the police special forces, the anti-drug department would do anything short of killing to get someone like him in their ranks. It was while he was having these thoughts that something had all of a sudden slammed into the crown of his head, and he toppled over, the sight in front of his eyes darkening. So disoriented and shocked he was that he didn't even register the pain for a moment. He didn't understand what was happening, but two seconds later, pain exploded from his head. It was as if someone had cracked his skull open with an axe as a mind-splitting headache, made him break out in cries of pain while he held his head. The wet and sticky feeling on his hands let him know that he was bleeding, and bleeding profusely at that. Even as his eyes were tightly shut as he tried to cope with the insane amount of pain, his sensitive fox ears picked up the sound of liquid flowing close by. His eyes opened in shock when he felt his body getting engulfed by a wet and disgusting feeling. What the he cried out, but the green mass of mud and goo that had suddenly entrapped him took that chance to cover his mouth and nose, muffling his yells of fear. Instincts took over, and the boy started fighting desperately for his life. His nails lengthened into claws, and his body began spasming and squirming as he kicked and scratched at the mass of goo with everything he had. However, his struggle accomplished nothing except making him burn oxygen faster. With the green sludge covering his mouth and nose, he could not breathe. His movement slowed down to a stop, and his arms fell down lifelessly. He was moments away from dying from asphyxiation. Help. Somebody. Help me. Naruto cried out in his mind, but there was nobody around. He was attacked in a less frequented alley where people did not pass by too often. To top it off, his attacker had muffled his cries and subdued him too quickly for anyone to hear his struggle. His sight went pitch dark as his eyes rolled back in his head. He lost consciousness. In a minute or two, he would die. It is said that moments before dying, people see their lives flash before their eyes. But what played at the front of Naruto's mind were not memories of his life. They were the memories of a different person. An orphan and a lonely boy who pulled all kinds of pranks and annoyed the hell out of everyone just for them to notice his existence. A boy who could make clones of himself, 
Someone whose creed was to never give up and never go back on his word. Someone who fought against a godlike man who had annihilated an entire military city by himself. Someone who had even become strong enough to fight on equal grounds against a goddess. That someone looked eerily similar to him. He had no fox ears and no tails either, but everything else was too similar for it to be a coincidence. The same blonde hair, the same baby blue eyes, the same three pairs of whisker-like birthmarks on his cheeks. They even had the same name. It was him. An incredibly powerful version of Naruto Uzumaki from another life, from another world. The sludge villain chortled to himself. Lucky. Lucky. So lucky. He had never expected to escape after All Might had defeated him and sealed him in a plastic bottle. And not only had he escaped, but the bottle he had been sealed into also happened to crash into the head of a passing-by boy with a fox quirk. Disoriented and wobbly from the powerful hit, the boy had been knocked down, unaware of his surroundings for a moment. The fact that he had not been knocked out cold was a testament to his toughness. But with him momentarily out of it, the sludge villain had to spend next to no effort in capturing the boy. Hmm, a fox quirk. Not the best, but not bad either. The villain hummed in glee as the mud his body consisted of started to flow through the boy's mouth. He was going to take over him, to possess him. Suddenly, a shrill scream of agony erupted from the sludge villain as a glowing chain of light burst from the boy's spine and impaled the green goo around him. What's happening? The villain screamed in incomprehension. His mud-like body offered him a degree of resistance against physical attacks that almost bordered on immunity. He could not be harmed even by bullets, much less by some pointed chain. However, his train of thought ceased when another golden chain burst from the boy's back and stabbed into the mud, making the villain scream himself hoarse from the pain once more. Terror engulfed the sludge villain's mind, and the shadow of death crept into his heart. He had to get away. He didn't understand how he could be wounded so severely by some chains. But he had a feeling that if another one or two of those chains impaled him, he would perish. But right as the mass of green goo crawled out of the boy's body and tried to scurry away, two more golden chains burst out of the still unconscious boy's back and rose high up in the air. A dome of golden light had suddenly come into existence, and when the sludge villain tried to pass through it, much to his shock, the mud making up his body dried up and solidified on contact. He lost control over his body, and that portion of solidified mud broke away from him. Further thoughts regarding that anomaly ended, however, as the sharp and pointed ends of the four golden chains that created the chain dome had suddenly stabbed into his body. The sludge villain could not even find the strength to voice his frustration and unwillingness to die. Even as the last portion of his body dried up and broke into pieces, his last thought was one of disbelief, unable to accept or understand how after escaping from the hands of the number one strongest hero, he would die at the hands of some nameless 14-year-old boy. Ah. How could I make such a mistake? A very tall and thin young man yelled at himself. As he climbed down the stairs from the rooftop of the building where he landed together with the fanboy who had clung to him, All Might was stupefied to discover that the plastic bottle in which he had sealed the sludge villain was no longer in the pocket of his cargo pants. That rush of frustration and exasperation was so intense that it made him slightly dizzy, and he had to stop momentarily to avoid puking blood again. I can't even go searching for him anymore. I've reached my limit for today. As he passed by a window, a sharp glint shone in the corner of his eye, and the blonde man turned his head to see a golden dome of light rising from between two buildings. But it only lasted for a few seconds before it disappeared. However, the aftermath deeply startled him as he saw the two buildings that the dome of light had touched started tilting towards each other. It looked like that golden dome of light had damaged the outer walls of the buildings. Color drained from his face and in spite of the great harm he was doing to his body by forcing himself to go back into his muscular form after having already reached his limit, All Might smashed his way through the window and launched himself towards the scene. He arrived there just in time to see a boy in his mid-teens lying unconscious on the ground in pieces of dried-up green mud and sludge scattered all over the place. He recognized those remains as the sludge villain that he had encountered only a few minutes ago, but All Might did not waste his already limited time thinking too much about the situation. Saving the lives of other people came first. Scooping the unconscious boy in his arms, he quickly jumped into the collapsing buildings to save the rest of the people trapped within. Fortunately, All Might was not the only hero that had arrived at the scene speedily. Other prominent heroes such as Kemui, Death Arms, and Backdraft had also come to help the people trapped in the half-collapsed buildings. Fortunately, nobody had died, but there were dozens of injured people and significant property damage as well. 
But where did that golden light come from? What kind of quirk is that? It was the question that everyone was asking on the internet seeing as the incident had gone viral. Unfortunately for the curious people, nobody had managed to capture the actual moment in a photo or in a video, so they were not clear on what had caused the buildings to collapse. What was clear, however, was that a villain with a powerful quirk had tried to attack a young boy who was on his way home from school. What made the situation go viral is that not only that two buildings had been destroyed and dozens of people had been injured, but that the villain in question was found dead at the scene as well. And that had led to all sorts of speculations. Did that boy kill the villain? But how? According to the authorities, he only has a fox quirk. It was a bad matchup against the sludge villain. Maybe he has two quirks? Is that even possible? I mean, there's Endeavor's son. He has both a fire and an ice quirk. Yo, hear me out. What if there is a third person? What if someone else was at the scene and killed the villain before running away? A vigilante? While the media outlets and the people on the internet were fussing greatly over this matter, the boy in question was still unconscious in the hospital. Two days passed since the sludge villain's attack and subsequent death, but the victim had yet to regain his consciousness. My son, is he going to be okay? Please tell me he's fine, a blonde-haired man said, his voice cracking towards the end. His eyes were filled with unshed tears. Next to him, a red-haired woman was crying in silence, her face buried in her palms. Naruto's parents were greatly distraught over the news. Fatal accidents in today's society were much more common than several decades ago. Cases of young children dying due to their own quirks or cases of villains killing people were not rare, to say the least. When such a high percentage of people possess superpowers, it stood to reason that the mortality rate among average people would increase as well. Regardless of all that, it had never gotten any easier for doctors to tell the truth to the parents of a dying child. Currently, I can't promise you anything. There are signs that he had almost died of asphyxiation. If his brain was left without oxygen for too long, I fear. The doctor let out a sigh and trailed off when his words made the child's mother break. Her husband could do nothing except for hugging her to his chest, even as tears were rolling down his cheeks too. Do not despair. There is still hope the doctor said, trying to alleviate their suffering. Your boy is a warrior. He might fight through this. There is still hope, he said, repeating himself. Just as he finished his words, a nurse arrived in. A Russian said, Dr. Tachikawa, he's awakened. The boy is awake and he asked for water. Without waiting for the medical staff's permission, the two parents rushed towards their son's room at the same time. A white ceiling, an oddly familiar and unpleasant smell of antibiotics, and the sound of medical machines beeping in the background. Naruto did not take long to realize that he was in a hospital, but before he could make sense of it, a burning sensation in his throat made him unconsciously ask for water. A few moments later, two people burst through the door of his hospital room at the same time, rushing to his bed. Blonde spiky hair, fair complexion, blue eyes, a thin build, and a kind smile on his face. A face that looked so similar to his, it was none other than Minato Namikaze. Father, he croaked. Suddenly, a curtain of red hair obstructed his view as a woman threw her arms around him, hugging him for all he was worth and soaking the crook of his neck with her tears. Mother. Outside of his will, his eyes teared up and he started to cry as well. He had never thought he would one day see his parents alive. He had seen their chakra remnants and the reanimated corpse of his father during the war. But they had not been alive. Not like now. Naruto. My son. My dear Naruto, Kushina could not stop crying. Minato too sat on the edge of the bed and patted his head while trying to stop his own tears from flowing. The nurses and the doctor on the side found their own eyes getting wet too at the emotional sight of the reunited family. However, at that moment, a sudden thought cut through Naruto's heart like a searing hot blade. This is a lie. Only an illusion. He could still remember it as if it had happened yesterday. He could still vividly recall the rabbit goddess, Kagaya killing Sasuke, and then pulling out the bijou from his body. He could still vividly remember the god tree's branches wrapping around him and the blood-red moon shining ominously in the sky. He started to cry even harder as his arms wrapped around his mother's back, embracing her as if it was the last time. But after a few moments, his hands came together and his fingers formed a ram seal. Kai, he whispered. However, nothing happened. Kai, he said, this time speaking out loud. Kushina lifted her head and looked at him in worry. What's wrong, honey? Naruto closed his eyes and sobbed in silence. This isn't real. None of this is real. Only an illusion to trick me. 
An illusion of the life I've never had, he said. Admitting those words out loud caused him untold amounts of pain. What are you saying, dear? I'm real. I'm here, Kushina said, starting to get scared of what her son was saying. Even if it was only an imaginary world, an illusion, Naruto could not help his tears. I love you, mom. Looking up at his father, he told him too. I love you, dad. I wish I could stay here forever. I wish I could be with you forever. He could not continue as he choked on a sob. But I can't. This isn't real. He put his hands again in a ram seal and shouted, Release! I. Alerted by the boy's shouts, the doctor and the nurses pulled away Minato and Kushina from his bed. Even as Naruto started to shout in desperation as if he was trying to break a spell, one of the nurses came with a syringe and injected a serum into his neck. In but a few seconds, the boy's agitation disappeared, and he closed his eyes. A few moments later, he fell asleep. Two weeks later. Come on, man. Even Bakugo doesn't want to miss out on this. We gotta show that bastard who the best class is. Kiba said, his voice half annoyed, half pleading. Since the soccer championship had been cancelled without the two rival teams finding out who exactly was the best, the students decided to have an unofficial match, after classes, outside of school, and decide it once and for all. Sorry, man. I can't. Dad needs my help with the car. Two weeks passed since the sludge villain incident happened, and Naruto had become the most famous kid in his school. However, it only took a few days for everyone to realize that he was a changed person since that day. Gone was the boisterous boy who would play with a soccer ball even in the classroom during breaks. Gone was the full of life and energetic child that always showed a toothy grin to everyone. While most people chalked it up to him almost dying and dealt with it accordingly, Inazuka Kiba could not readily understand why Naruto never wanted to hang out after school with him and the gang anymore, or why he had become so quiet and introverted. You were a great help, Naruto, thank you. Minato said while wiping his hands of engine oil with a piece of rack. I didn't do much, only gave you some wrenches and screws, Naruto said with a bright smile, visibly happy at his father's compliments. It may not be much for you, but it meant a lot to me. Lots of time and effort saved by not getting up from beneath the car every time just for a wrench, Minato said, mirroring his son's bright smile. He threw his arm around Naruto's shoulder and said, Tell you what, how about we take your mother? and we all go out today for pizza tonight instead of having dinner at home? For real, the boy said in excitement. When did I ever lie to you? If possible, Naruto's smile became even wider. Awesome. I'll go tell mom. Helping his father around the garage, mowing the lawn, washing the dishes, taking out the trash, and even helping out his mother with cooking, Kushina had not even known her son could cook. Ever since almost dying at the hands of the sludge villain, it was as if Naruto had become a completely different person. While beforehand he was bratty and had a tense relationship with his parents, nowadays it looked like he was attached to their hip. He was doing everything in his power to be together with them for as long as possible every day. It had to be said that both Minato and Kushina were deeply moved by the changes in their son. Not a day passed without Kushina giving him at least a half a minute long hug. If it was Naruto from before, he would try to get away from her arms as fast as possible while saying in annoyance that he wasn't a little kid anymore. But nowadays, whenever his mom hugged him, Naruto melted in her arms and hugged her back just as tight. Whenever his father called him for a game of chess, Naruto would even put down his homework and come play with him. It was to the point where his parents were starting to worry about him and were thinking about going with him to a psychologist for therapy. It was only Naruto's insistence that he was perfectly fine that stopped them from going through with it. I just... I just never appreciated how lucky I am to be alive, Naruto said when they had tried to talk to him about their worries regarding the drastic changes in his behavior. How lucky I am to have parents. Good parents like you. I almost died. You saw me when I woke up at first. I thought I was dreaming. I thought it was an illusion, but I survived. I want to make the most of my life, and I want to show you every day how much I appreciate and respect you. Those heartfelt words completely disarmed Minato and Kushina of all the arguments that they had prepared beforehand to convince him of going to therapy. In the first place, it was impossible for them to be mad about the fact that their teenage son stopped being a brat and showed his affection for them so openly now. Even as almost one month passed since he had regained the memories of his past life, Naruto still felt like he was dreaming. For a long time, he had thought that his current life was nothing but an illusion. He had thought that the infinite Tsukuyami that Madara had cast on the moon had entrapped him too after he lost the fight against Kagaya. However, as days passed one by one, he was beginning to accept that his current life was not an illusion. 
In the first place, he could not feel the existence of Chakra. He had tried countless times to access it, but to no avail. Furthermore, Japan and the society he lived in currently could not be any more different from the elemental nations in Kanahagakur no Sato. They were so different, and there were so many new things that his mind alone could not have imagined such stuff. It was impossible for Jinjutsu to show him something that he had never heard of before. Even if I'm wrong and everything I've felt for the past 14 years was fake, even if all of it was just an illusion or just a dream, I, I don't want to wake up. Listen to me, Naruto. Never reveal that quirk of yours to anyone, no matter what, even if your best friend. No, even if your father and I were to die in front of your eyes, as long as there are other people around, never use your chains. Never. Before leaving the hospital, his mother had insisted he did not answer any of the curious questions of the nurses or the reporters. She had also chased away any of the journalists that tried to interview him regarding the incident after he was discharged from the hospital. He let out a sigh and caressed his fluffy foxtail with his hands, making sure it was entirely wet before grabbing a bottle from the edge of the shower cab that showed an image of a furry tail and a pair of animal ears. Turning off the water, he started to scrub his fur with the special shampoo, making a great deal of bubbles. To think that I'd one day become just like the characters from that pervert's books. Naruto thought in amusement at the memory of his mentor from his previous life and his Aika Aika, Kimonamami book. His amusement did not last for long because his mind soon went back to his second quirk, the adamantin sealing chains, and the serious discussion that he had had with his mother. The only time I allow you to use this quirk is if your life is in peril and you have absolutely no other way of escaping without it. Please, Naruto, you have to promise me that you'll never use it, Kushina said pleadingly, and, much to Naruto's surprise, for golden chains started growing from her back. You have that quirk too? I thought you were quirkless he said in disbelief. How could she have kept such an important secret from her family for such a long time? Kushina nodded her head and said in a heavy voice, Just like I asked you to never reveal your quirk to anyone, my grandmother had asked the same of me too. If you had not awakened this quirk, I would have never told you this secret either. I would have taken it to the grave with me. Judging by the expression on his face, Kushina knew that her son understood the severity of the situation. Our quirk is special. It doesn't manifest like other quirks in early childhood. It takes a moment of great stress or desperation to awaken it. It could happen when you are very young, but it could also happen when you are in your 20s or older. Or, it might not awaken at all. For example, my grandmother awakened these chains when she was in her late 30s, but my mother never awakened this quirk at all. As for me, I was 8 years old when it happened, during the car crash in which my parents died. What I'm telling you now is 100% serious, Naruto. This is not a joke. A very powerful man has had his eyes on this quirk for decades. It's only thanks to my grandmother's efforts, Mito, that he had lost all traces of our family. But the moment that you reveal your quirk to the public, he will find out. He will find you, and he will kill you. But why would someone be so obsessed with this quirk? Naruto asked, a bit freaked out. Think about the villain that attacked you. He had a powerful mutant-type quirk, but your chains nullified it. These chains? They do have their downsides they are rather slow, so heroes and villains specializing in speed can avoid them without much problem, and their limited range makes those capable of flight difficult to catch. But if someone does get caught by the chains, it is all over. There is no escaping from it. Our quirk is the bane of all quirks. And that's why my grandmother had been hunted down, why I had kept my quirk a secret even from my family, and why you also need to keep it secret too, no matter the cost. The one who is after us will stop at nothing to get his hands on this quirk. Not a day passed without Naruto thinking back to his mom's words. Ever since that day, Kushina never brought up the topic again, nor had she ever used her quirk in front of him. It was a secret that only the two of them knew. I don't blame her for keeping it a secret from dad, he thought while using the showerhead to rinse his foxtail. Unlike the yellow flash, fourth Hokage from his previous life, Minato Namikaze of this world was just a regular man. He was a brilliant accountant and a devoted family man, but he was no fighter. As for Minato's special ability, his quirk was a perfect recall memory. That was one of the reasons why he was so successful in his professional life. That said, finding out that his wife and his son could one day end up in mortal peril would not do Minato any good. As intelligent as he was, Minato was still just an ordinary human. Mom doesn't trust me enough yet to tell me who's the one that wants our quirk. She doesn't know who I used to be in my previous life. Turning off the water, he stepped out of the shower and grabbed a large towel before taking a seat on a stool and starting to dry his hair, his fox ears, 
and his foxtail. I didn't even know it was possible to steal someone's quirk, he continued his train of thought, but I'll be damned if I let anyone touch even a single hair of mom and dad. They'd have to get over my dead body to do so. He had not appreciated his parents before. However, after regaining the memories of his previous life, his family had become the most important thing in the world. I may not have chakra in this world, but I'm not a regular human this time around either. This fox quirk, I will make the most of it. I will become powerful, powerful enough to protect the ones I love. Naruto had wanted to become a pro hero even before he recovered his memories, but his motivation was completely different now. Becoming a pro hero was no longer the end goal. Now, his end goal was to keep his family safe. Since you're all third years, it's time for you to think seriously about your future. I'll pass out handouts for your future plans now, but you're all pretty much planning to go into the hero course, right? At the homeroom teacher's words, the class erupted into cheers, and everyone started to show off their quirks. Yes, yes, you all have wonderful quirks, but using your quirks at school is against the rules. A disdainful voice rang over all the other noises in the classroom. It was none other than Katsuki Bakugo. Sensei, don't lump us all in the same group. I'm not going to be stuck at the bottom with the rest of these rejects. That was uncalled for, Katsuki. Yeah, nobody asked for your opinion. Shut up. But the blonde boy laughed in ridicule. You should shut you up like the extras that you are. Haha. <laughs> While the kids were yelling at each other, the teacher looked through some of his files. Oh, if I remember correctly, you want to go to UA High, right, Bakugo? As everyone in the class was voicing out their surprise, UA High was a national school renowned for its extremely low acceptance rate, barely 0.2% of the test participants managing to get in every year. Bakugo made sure to rub it in their faces. That's exactly why you guys are just extras. I aced the mock test. I'm the... Only one in this school who could possibly get into UA. I'll definitely surpass All Might and become the top hero. My name will be inscribed on the list of top earners. But the teacher saw it as the perfect moment to pour a bucket of ice-cold water on his arrogance. I do not doubt you'll get famous one day with your quirk, but you're not the only one who is going to UA this year. Uzumaki Naruto from Class D is coming along with you as well. Katsuki Bakugo's face became an interesting shade of red, almost purple. It was as if he was going to explode. How is that possible? I never heard anything about that. Oh, Uzumaki Naruto had been recommended to the school by All Might himself. He doesn't need to take the exam. He has already been accepted. Bakugo looked like he had just seen a ghost. He sat down in his seat and remained completely silent for the rest of the class, a dark aura lingering around him. So affected he had been by the news that someone had gotten a recommendation from the number one hero that he did not even hear the teacher talk about how Izuku Midoriya also wanted to go to UA2. It was lunch break, and Naruto was sitting at his desk, eating the food that his mother had cooked and packed for him that morning. Putting his palms together in a small prayer, he bowed his head and said, Irida Kamasu. But right as he was about to dig in, the door of the classroom was blown off its hinges with a loud bang, making other students cry out in panic. A blonde-haired boy stomped his way into the classroom with the sleeves of his shirt rolled up and tiny explosions cracking in his palms. Uzumaki, fight me, he screamed in rage and, without even waiting for an answer, he jumped in the air and launched himself at the still-seated Naruto. In the blink of an eye, Naruto stood up and jumped back over two rows of desks, accurately landing with the tip of his toes on the windowsill. Looking at his ruined and burning desk, he glared at the culprit. What the hell is wrong with you? he asked angrily. However, in Bakugo's eyes, it sounded way different. The fact that the fox boy had apparently had the leisure to not only dodge his charge, but also grab his lunchbox and chopsticks from the table was like pouring gasoline on a fire. You dare to mock me? D. Bakugo screamed enraged and lunged at Naruto full of bad intentions. But Naruto let himself fall on his back, easily slipping through the open window and falling to the ground from the second floor. His classmates cried out in shock at what he did, and even Bakugo stopped in his tracks in disbelief. But when he looked through the window and saw Naruto standing on the ground completely unharmed and even grabbing a meatball from his lunchbox with his chopsticks, Bakugo saw white in front of his eyes. He was so angry that he couldn't even form coherent sentences. You bastard. Oh, oh. In the end, he just gave up on speaking and jumped off through the window as well, his hands extended in front of him and booming with explosions. All right, that's quite enough, Naruto said in annoyance. Right as Bakugo's palm was 30 centimeters away from his face, Naruto stepped to the side, 
grabbed one of the boy's forearms with his free hand, the other one was still holding his lunchbox, and tripped him with his left foot. The boy had too much momentum to stop himself in time, and he crashed face first into the asphalt. A scream of rage came from Bakugo as he pushed with his hands against the ground to lift himself up, but Naruto suddenly appeared on top of him and pressed a knee on his back, flattening him against the ground. Naruto did not press hard enough to cause him pain, but his weight made the boy struggle like a madman, unable to breathe. Let go of me, furry shithead. I'll smash your face when I get up. You hear me? I'll kill you. I don't know what's your problem, but you should calm the heck down, Naruto said in annoyance and lightly slammed himself with his butt on Bakugo's back, knocking the wind out of him. Then, still using Bakugo's body as if it was a chair, he started eating from his lunchbox amidst the boy's howls and threats of bodily harm. My mom put in her effort and loved to make me this lunchbox. What if you spoiled it? Naruto scolded him as he munched on some rice. You should never waste food. Other people. I've had enough of you, Bakugo suddenly screamed, and it was only thanks to his sharp, animalistic instincts that Naruto jumped away in time, evading the explosion by the skin of his teeth. Looking at the boy's twisted from rage face and the explosions cracking around him, Naruto could not help thinking. This guy wants to become a hero? At that moment, Bakugo looked no different than a villain. Crouching down and grabbing a small pebble from the ground, Naruto said, that explosion could have seriously injured me. His voice was no longer as easygoing as before. That was the point, you smug bastard, Bakugo hollered, explosions blowing even louder from his palms. When I'm done with you, you'll be. The sound of an extremely fast object tearing through the air was heard, and Bakugo's words died in his throat as he unexpectedly collapsed. His eyes rolled into the back of his head. He was unconscious. On his forehead, a glaring red bruise the size of a 500 yen coin appeared. Naruto had thrown the pebble that he had picked up from the ground with such speed, strength, and accuracy that Bakugo had been effectively sniped before he even had the time to react. Still got it, Naruto said, rather pleased with himself. Throwing projectiles, be they kanai or senbons, had been the bread and butter of any shinobi in his past life. I can't throw it as fast as in my past life, he thought a bit disappointed. Some shinobi could throw projectiles with such speed that they were not too different from the speed of bullets of a handgun in this world. But it's still good enough to deal with this idiot. As annoyed as he was with Bakugo for attacking him out of nowhere, Naruto did not want to seriously injure him. Knocking him out was the fastest and least painful method to deal with him. He'll probably have a concussion from that. But he'll recover in no time. Oh my god. You were so freaking awesome. So freaking cool. Midoriya Izuku had stars in his eyes. He had entered into a trance. He was in full fanboy mode. Naruto's victory over Katsuki Bakugo was like something out of a movie. The green-haired boy was not the only one. Most of the boys and girls who had witnessed the scene were losing their minds at that moment. Holy crap, did you see that? My god, I got it on camera. I got it on camera. With so many witnesses vouching for him that Bakugo had attacked him unprovoked, Naruto himself still had no idea why the boy had suddenly picked a fight with him, he had not gotten into trouble with the principal. In the first place, Bakugo was infamous in the school. This was not the first time he had blown up school furniture with his quirk, nor was it the first time he had picked a fight with someone, not by far. Dude, I wish I was there to see it. Aw, oh, I wish I was there to beat the crap out of that dumbass myself. Kiba yelled in annoyance the next day. Seriously, what the hell? I miss one day in three months of school. And that's exactly when all the interesting shit happens. Naruto chuckled at Kiba's exuberance. Although he had regained the memories of his past life, he was still Naruto of this current life as well. He still got along well with the dog boy. Why did he try to jump you anyway? Beats me. I was just about to eat my lunch when he suddenly blew up the door of the classroom and lunged at me. I think I know why, Izuku said from the side and explained to them what he thought was the case. So he was jealous I can get into UA thanks to All Might's recommendation? He attacked me just because of that? Naruto said with a deadpan. It's just my take on it. I'm not sure what exactly was the case. I think Kakin can't accept that someone else might be better than him? The green-haired boy said and rubbed the back of his head. Did he forget I beat the crap out of him only a few months ago? Kiba said and snorted. Well, you kinda jumped on him when he didn't expect it. It wasn't a fair fight dash Naruto began to say, but Kiba cut him off. So? He did the same to you and still lost. And we both know I could kick your ass too. So that makes me two levels above him. Sure, sure you can, Naruto said with a laugh. 
not taking him seriously. In the first place, he did not care about fighting Kiba. They were friends. By the way, Kiba, Izuku said, my homeroom teacher didn't say anything about you going to UA together with Kaken and Naruto. Are you really not going to the best hero school in the country? Kiba shrugged his shoulders uncaringly. I don't give a damn about all that hero crap. Once I'm done with school, I'll join the family business. At that, Izuku stopped asking questions altogether. The Inazuka family was rather feared in their city, and for a good reason. Many unsavory rumors were circulating about them. Izuku preferred not to delve too deep into those waters. Eventually, it was time for them to part and go their separate ways. However, after Kiba left, Izuku continued to walk with Naruto despite that it would lead to a rather large detour on his way home. After a few minutes of making idle talk, Izuku said, You know, I've always wanted to become a hero. It's been my dream forever. I have applied to go to UA too. But I wanted to ask you, do you think I can become a pro hero too despite not having a quirk? Naruto stopped walking and looked at Izuku who was similarly looking at him intently. The answer was clear in his mind. It wasn't possible. However, how to break it to his friend was another matter altogether. Imagine I'm a villain, Naruto suddenly said. What? Not giving him an answer, Naruto suddenly grabbed Izuku by his shirt and lifted him in the air as if he was weightless before pushing him rather roughly against the wall of a nearby building. Give me your money. Give me everything you have on you. Izuku was confused. Confused and scared. What had suddenly gotten into Naruto? Come on, fight back. Show me what you can do in this situation. Show me what a quirkless person is capable of. When he heard those words, Izuku finally understood what he meant. Taking the widening of the green-haired boy's eyes as a sign that he got his message across, Naruto let Izuka down and smoothed his stretched-out shirt. My quirk isn't even that strong, but you'd still be helpless to deal with me. If you can't deal with someone like me, how would you deal with someone like Bakugo that could probably get strong enough to blow up an entire neighborhood in a few years? What about someone that can move faster than a race car? Or someone like the No-3 hero who can fly? Izuku said, his voice trembling, But you beat Kaken. You beat him with just martial arts and by throwing a piece of rock at him. It was amazing. Could I not do the same too? Could you? Naruto asked back. Izuku became silent at that. He was a scrawny, skinny, and unathletic boy. He had never done any sports, nor had he ever gotten into a fight with someone. My mom used to be a judo instructor. She's a black belt. Because of her, I've trained since I was little in not only judo but also in karate, and I have recently even started learning mixed martial arts, Naruto said. It was not a lie, and Izuku knew that. Before getting pregnant with Naruto, Uzumaki Kushina used to be a judo instructor at a dojo. She retired afterward, and due to her husband's lucrative job, she and Minato decided that it was better for her to stay at home and take care of their baby instead of going back to work and hiring a nanny. That said, it was due to Kushina's martial arts pedigree and Naruto having too much energy for his own good that his parents introduced him to the world of martial arts at a young age. While Naruto had never cared about his studies, when it came to his training, he had always put in the required effort and more. From the beginning, his goal had been to become a pro hero, as it was the dream of 99% of the children his age. Now that he had regained the memories of his previous life, it only further cemented that hard-working aspect of his personality. My quirk isn't all that amazing, but it's not bad either. Still, I've trained my ass off for years and I still continue to do so because becoming a pro hero is not an easy thing. So when I put in so much effort despite already having a quirk, what can you do to keep up with me? And not just me. Think about Bakugo, what can you do to keep up with him? Do you think you can beat him in a fight? Imagine you've become a pro hero and someone as strong as him, a villain, wants to kill people. What can you do to stop him? Izuku looked at the ground stubbornly even as tears started pooling in his eyes. All Might told me the same when I met him a few weeks ago. Even so, Izuku stopped to wipe his tears with the sleeve of his shirt. I don't need to be the strongest. I just want to help people. I want people to feel safe when I'm around. I want to be like All Might. To say, I am here and immediately make everyone believe that everything is going to be alright. Naruto blew out a long sigh. It pained him to see Izuka cry like that, and it pained him even more when he thought about how impossible his dream seemed to be. He did not know what to say for a while, and nearly a minute of uncomfortable silence followed. The only sounds heard being Izuku's sobs and the car's engines passing by in the background. Reminds me of how I used to be in my previous life, Naruto thought. Nobody believed me when I said I would become greater than any of the Hokage and make everyone acknowledge me. But then, 
He shook his head. Still, in some regards, we couldn't be more different. I had the tools to become great. I was from the Uzumaki clan, and I had Kurama too. Izuku has nothing. Thinking about his former lifelong companion, Naruto's tail sacked. He missed the grumpy old fox. They may have not been friends for a long time before they were both killed by Kagaya, but Naruto would never forget just how many times the bijou had saved his life. Naruto shook his head to clear up the depressing thoughts and turned his attention back to his friend. Yue's entrance exam is in nine months. Have you prepared for it? He asked. His crying having ceased for the moment, Izuku answered while avoiding eye contact due to being ashamed at how he had cried in front of him. I think I'm almost ready for the written exams. What about the practical exams? There's going to be some fighting for sure. Izuku fiddled with his thumbs as he looked down again. Don't tell me you're relying on getting in through a fluke? The green-haired boy's silence was all the answer he needed. Naruto did not even try to hold back a loud groan. Not only did Izuku not have a quirk, but he was weak even for a quirkless boy of his age. Yet he hadn't done anything to at least try to bridge the gap between him and the others. Man, you are hopeless, Naruto said and let out another sigh. But I'll help you. I won't let you struggle alone. Izuku looked up at him startled. You want to help me? We're friends, aren't we? Friends help each other in times of need, Naruto said. I'll take you with me when I train from now on. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll go to the gym. Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, we'll go to the dojo, and you'll learn from one of our sensei there. I will spar with you too after you learn the basics. Training every day? Naruto frowned a little at his reaction. Listen, Izuku. Becoming a hero without a quirk is unheard of, but I'll support you since you're my friend. But if you're not ready to put in ten times more effort than everyone else, you might as well give up now. You're wasting your time and maybe even ruining your future career options. If you want to become a hero, that wishy-washy attitude won't work. You're either all in or you're out. Izuku showed a pondering look for a while, but then his eyes became resolute, and his face brimmed with determination when he said, I'll do it. I'll do everything you tell me. You won't hear even one word of complaint from me. Naruto patted his shoulder and smiled in encouragement. I'll ask mom to make a workout plan for you, and a diet plan too. She knows about this stuff much more than I do. I'll give them to you on Monday. Okay? So we start on Monday? Izuka asked. Yep. Enjoy your last two days of comfortable life to their fullest. Naruto said with a chuckle and waved his hand in goodbye. All right, see you, man. Have a nice weekend. For Kanai, split the air at a speed that made them barely visible to the naked eye before hitting four different targets that had been placed randomly in the backyard of his house. Then again, and again. Eventually, Naruto ran out of Kanai and went to collect them before starting to practice his aim again. But this time, he threw them while he was running and jumping. Miraculously, every single one of those Kanai hit its target perfectly. Several months had passed since Naruto had regained the memory of his past life, and ever since that day, he had been doing nothing but going to school, spending time with his parents, and training. He was training to the point of exhaustion every day except for Sundays, which were dedicated to resting and recovering. My quirk is not bad, but it has its limitations. I have to maximize what I can do with it. While he had a wealth of experience with fighting, throwing weapons, and even with a bow staff due to his memories, they were mostly theoretical. That's why nowadays he was training his body until wielding those weapons became second nature to him ingraining it in his muscle memory. Training at the dojo is kind of useless these days. I can't wait until I go to UA. His expertise in taijutsu and the superhuman physical capabilities granted to him by his quirk made sparring with other people unsatisfactory. He was too good and too powerful. He did not gain anything from sparring with average people. He needed to fight against similarly skilled and physically strong people. That's why he was super hyped about UA High the idea of an institution that would focus on developing his quirk and offering him worthy opponents to train with was very appealing. After placing two extra targets in the courtyard, he grabbed three kanai with each hand, a total of six, and threw them. Damn, I missed one. Despite the incredible feat of hitting five out of the six targets located in different locations by throwing six kanai at the same time, he was still dissatisfied with himself. But he did not dwell on it. Picking up another six kanai, he threw them once more. Hard work had never betrayed him. Immersed in his training, time flew by without his notice. He was shaken awake from his single-minded training by the voice of his mother. Naruto-chan, dinner is ready. Your father has arrived from work too. Let's eat together. If it had been him from before regaining his memories, he would have gotten annoyed at his mom addressing him that way. But now, 
He showed a large smile as he said, Sure, just let me pick up my kanai. Give me two minutes. Be careful with those knives, Naruto. You could get seriously hurt, Kushina said, frowning her brows in worry when she saw the band-aids wrapped around his fingers. Yes, I will be careful. Don't worry, I won't hurt myself, Naruto said. Your words would be a lot more convincing if your hands weren't full of bandages. Despite his mother being in the midst of scolding him, his heart was full of warmth. Naruto had never had someone worry about his well-being in his past life. Not for small stuff like that. I didn't cut myself. Look, he said and put down his knife and his fork and peeled off one of the band-aids wrapped around his index finger, revealing an angry red, almost raw-looking line. It looked as if it was caused by something very thin and sharp something that had dug into the skin of his fingers. It's from a wire, Naruto explained. I've been thinking about ways to trap someone using my knives and wire, but my hands are too soft. I need some time before my skin thickens and I get calluses. I also need to find some wire that's more durable than fishing lines, he said, muttering the last sentence more for himself rather than for them. His father listened to their talk very interested. Where did you get those knives, by the way? Minato asked. Naruto rubbed the back of his head as he replied. I used my allowance. I asked mom to give me all the money you would normally give me in a month at once. His father put his knife and fork down and looked at Naruto seriously as he said. That money was for you to have fun. If you need things for training, just talk to us. We'll support you as much as we can, Naruto. Before regaining his memories, Naruto used to spend his allowance by going to arcade games together with Inazuka Kiba and, sometimes, with Izuku Midoriya too but he had stopped doing that altogether after the sludge villain's attack. Nowadays, he used all that money his parents gave him on buying kanai, strong fishing lines, and, as of late, he had started saving up money to buy smoke bombs. Where did you get all these ideas about using weapons, anyway? Minato asked curiously. I've been thinking about it for some time, especially after that guy, Baku Go, attacked me at school, Naruto said. Oh, the kid with the exploding quirk? Minato said in recognition. Aside from the memories of his past life, Naruto shared everything with his parents. He held no secrets, especially not from his mom. Yep, that one. His quirk is honestly amazing. If he gets into UA and stops being a jerk. Language, Naruto. Kushina chided him lightly. I could totally see him becoming one of the top heroes in the future. Anyway, I beat him easily because I know how to fight. But if I don't keep on improving in a few years, I won't be his match. I have to work hard to stay one step ahead of everyone. Although months had passed since his parents noticed the drastic changes in their son for the first time, there were still moments when Naruto surprised them with his maturity. So I've been thinking of ways to close the gap between me and other people that have stronger quirks, ways to take full advantage of my quirk's superhuman strength, agility, and dexterity. I got this idea from the stories about ninjas from the Middle Ages. Minato, you should see how good he is with his throwing knives. Kushina gushed suddenly transitioning from being worried about Naruto getting hurt in training to speaking in excitement about his skill with the knives. As a martial arts practitioner herself, she could appreciate the effort and dedication Naruto was putting into his training. I'm serious. He can throw six knives at once and hit six different targets every time. It's incredible. She's exaggerating. I'm not hitting all of them every time Dash Naruto mumbled, slightly embarrassed at her praise. Finishing eating, Minato grabbed his plates and stood up. After putting them into the sink, he came back to the table and said, I'm proud of how hardworking you are even after knowing that you've already been accepted into UA High. Keep at it, Naruto. Your mom and I will support you to the best of our ability. Make a list of the tools and equipment you need and give it to me tomorrow, okay? Your dad has quite a good job, so you don't have to worry about the expenses as long as you don't want some crazy stuff, the blonde man said and put a hand on his son's head, rubbing it softly. Maybe it was a side effect of having a fox quirk, or maybe it was simply because he was starved for his parents' affection, or maybe because of both. Naruto closed his eyes and leaned into the head pat, a quiet purring sound coming from his throat as his father gently scratched the top of his head, between his fluffy fox ears. Kushina giggled at the scene and grinned widely. Although she wanted Naruto to never go through a similar incident again, she could not help but think deep within her heart that maybe the sludge villain's attack had been a blessing in disguise for their family. Before that, Naruto had been a rebellious teenager, disrespectful towards both her and his father, and he was rarely at home at all during the day, spending his time either at the dojo on the days when he trained or haunting the neighborhood with his friends on the days when he did not get to the dojo. Naruto showing his affection towards them so openly had not happened in years. 
Unknowingly, Kushina's eyes watered, and Naruto just happened to look at her at that moment. Are you okay, mom? He asked in worry when he saw her on the verge of crying. She stood up from her chair, came behind him, and wrapped her arms around him. I'm more than okay. I'm just so happy. Not one to be left out. Minato also joined his wife and son in a family hug. The sweeter his time with his parents was, the more restless he became. The happier he was, the more worried he became. And the more his love for his parents grew, the more his urgency to become stronger grew as well. Those contrasting feelings made him roll in his bed listlessly for hours that night. One moment his heart was flooded with happiness at the thought of how much his parents cared for him and loved him, and in the next moment, he would curl into a ball and clench his fists in worry due to knowing that he was not strong enough yet to protect them should a powerful villain attack them. Eventually, he stood up from his bed and, putting on a pair of sneakers, Naruto opened the window of his bedroom before jumping out. Despite falling from a height of over five meters, he did not make even the slightest sound when he landed on the ground. Next, he broke into a mad dash, his body appearing as little more than a phantom in the darkness of the night. He jumped on top of the two-meter-tall concrete fence of his courtyard effortlessly, and from there, he launched himself onto the rooftop of one of the neighboring houses, once again not causing even the slightest tremor or noise when he landed. He started shinobi jumping from one rooftop to another with such grace and confidence that it would leave parkour enthusiasts breathless with awe. The closer he got to the center of the city, the higher the buildings became, and Naruto was forced to start climbing up the walls. However, while he did not have chakra and he could not use the tree-walking technique of his past life, the superhuman agility and dexterity he possessed thanks to his fox quirk made him look as if he was defying gravity while he was running straight up the wall and jumping up using the tiniest footholds he could find. Furthermore, that big and fluffy fox tail at his back that he was usually annoyed with due to how much time it took him to wash it when he took baths was actually proving its use at this moment, giving him an increased degree of control over his body while he was in the air, allowing him to even change the direction of his jump or the speed of his landing. Several months later, a wide and tall amphitheater-style room was filled to the brim with children in their mid-teens. At the front of the room, a screen as wide and tall as the room was playing various images, assisting the man standing on the stage and explaining to everyone the contents of the exam ahead. That's right, it was the Hero Course Orientation Exam. As it says in the application requirements, you will be conducting mock urban battles after this. You can bring whatever you want with you. After the presentation, you'll head to the specified battle center, okay? Standing in front of the enormous gates of the city-like battle center, Izuku Midoriya gripped tightly a two-meter-long metal staff in his hands. It's time. I will show everyone that even a corkless person like me can do it. I'll give everything I got from my training at the dojo over the past nine months. I won't disappoint Naruto. I will show him that he didn't waste his time and effort helping me train. I won't disappoint the expectations of my sensei either. I will become the hero I've always dreamt of being. While Naruto did not personally train Izuku on a daily basis, they did spar at least once a week especially after three months into Izuku's training, when the green-haired boy had gotten the basic movements and training mentality down. He still remembered Naruto's advice. You're short and physically weak. Even if you went to the gym for years, it still wouldn't be enough to keep up with those people who have quirks that give them superhuman strength. So you have to keep that in mind, man. You need to know your limits and where you stand. That's why I think it would be great for you to learn how to use a weapon first instead of hand-to-hand -hand fighting. I recommend you use a bow staff. I'm using one myself too. As a typical nerdy boy, his first thought was katana. But once he got home and started thinking more deeply about his choice of weapon, after weighing the pros and cons of several different weapons, Izuku decided on learning how to use a bow staff too. For a complete noob like him, swords were actually not that great, especially not katanas. In contrast, using a staff made up for what he was missing. A staff would grant him a reach advantage over his opponents, and it would let him generate significant power with his strikes. After nine months of arduous training, Izuku had grown a few inches taller, his body had gained quite a bit of muscle, and, most importantly, he had way more self-confidence than before. A sudden yell startled all the boys and girls who had been staring open-mouthed at the city-like battle center through its wide-open gates. What's wrong? There are no real countdowns in real fights. Run. Run. The die had been cast, you know? As one, the group of children broke into a mad dash and spread through the city. Izuku was among them too. Only a few moments later, a two or three meter tall robot, standing on a one wheel foot, made a turn and lunged at him. It was the type that was worth one point. I'll kill you, came the robotic voice, 
But Izuku did not even flinch. Thanks to the hundreds of hours spent training with his bow staff and sparring against Naruto and his sensei at the dojo, Izuku had gotten used to being in a fight. Just as the robot swung its right arm at him in a wild cross, Izuku ducked under the swing and, clenching his hands on the end of his bow staff with as much strength as he could, he swung at the robot himself too. The other end of the staff smashed into the shoulder of the robot with a loud sound of metal colliding, making its body shake and momentarily disturbing its balance. The robot only had one foot, but the result was far from what Izuku had expected. Against a regular human, that staff strike would have smashed their shoulder to bits or, at the very least, dislocated it. Against this robot, however, it proved to be useless. Not only had the robot not been harmed in the least, but the rebound force also traveled back through the staff and Izuku's hands became numb from pain, almost losing their grip on his weapon. It was then that the reality of the situation finally dawned on Izuku for the first time, just how big his disadvantage was due to being quirkless. He finally understood that All Might did not just bash his dream of becoming a hero for no reason. The gap in power between quirkless people and those with strong quirks was as large as the distance between heaven and earth. Despite his eyes swimming with tears of frustration, Izuku gritted his teeth stubbornly. Even so, I won't give up. I just have to work harder. I will train harder. One step at a time. And the first step now is beating this robot in front of me. His mind regained its calm, and he jumped back a few steps, putting some distance between him and the robot. But the robot's AI did not seem to be very high as it just charged back at the boy in front of him like a bulldozer, doing the same type of attack, swinging its punch again only that it was the other arm this time. Your body may be too sturdy and strong for me to damage it. But what about that camera on your head? Izuka thought, and once he evaded the robot's wild punch again, he swung his staff from his back, overhead, and let out a cry as he smashed it against the robot's head with all of his strength. The end of the metallic staff just happened to hit the red lens on the robot's face that served as its eye, breaking it into smithereens. Unable to see anything anymore, the robot started flailing its arms aimlessly before eventually losing its equilibrium when it bumped into a light pole and fell down. One point, Izuku said and let out a scream of triumph. I can do it. Even without a quirk, I can do it. That small victory lit a flame in his heart, and his confidence soared. Nevertheless, the mock battle exam lasted only ten minutes. By the time the exam ended, reality hit Izuku like a train. Only three points. He had only managed to defeat three robots that were worth one point each. Try as he might, he could not stop the tears that suddenly flooded his eyes. He was not dumb. He did not need to wait for a week or two until he received the official results to know that he did not make it. He had heard other students talk about getting at least 10 points, while there were some with particularly strong quirks that had gotten even over 50 points. Izuku's prediction turned out to be true several days later when a letter arrived at his residence. He had failed. Attached to the letter was also a file that showed the rankings of the entrance exam participants. While he had done well in the written exam, his practical exam had one of the lowest scores among all. He had failed to join the hero course of UA High. In spite of his feelings of despair and depression, Izuku grabbed his phone and, upon scrolling through his contacts list, he tapped on Naruto's name, initiating a voice call. Even if he had not passed the exam, Naruto had devoted so much of his time and effort to training him. He had to at least tell him the results of his exam. He owed Naruto that much. Hey, Itsuku, what's up? The moment he heard Naruto's cheerful voice, the tears and the sadness that he had been holding and burst out all at once. Breaking into loud sobs, Izuku cried out. I failed. I'm sorry, Naruto. You spent so much time and effort to help me, but I still failed. I'm so sorry. Outside of his door, Izuka's mother was crying her eyes out too, her heart breaking at the pain she heard in her son's voice. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content, click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.